This is a Wool Observatory podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Welcome to Star Space Hi, and welcome to Star Stuff, a space podity. This is Cody Halfmoon, and I'm here with my co-host. Haley Osborne. Hello, hello. <laughs> and today we're talking about aliens. 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 <laughs> Which are definitely not real. And, you know, if we had any evidence of it being real, we wouldn't tell you anyway. <laughs> you know, I, I'm i just going to put this out there. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there are, like, trillions of galaxies galaxies with hundreds to trillions of stars, stars that statistically speaking probably have at least one planet around them. Mm -hmm. There's no way that there's not aliens. We'll talk about with the Drake equation today, right? But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, So Haley, as usual, made a fantastic outline for us. So thank you, Science Brain, for teaching English Brain the science. Uh, but I did want to show off my Arecibo shirt. Yeah. Of the Arecibo message. We got to interview mm-hmm. the Arecibo Observatory in uh, season one. Yeah. Which yeah. I know for a fact, for reasons I won't explain, posted on November 22nd mm-hmm. <laughs> of yeah. 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's get into it. What is the mm-hmm. – is it Fermi p- paradox? So the Fermi paradox. Fermi. See, I was um, trying to make it like more romantic, the Fermi paradox. I feel like that's probably a better way of pronouncing okay. it. I've always just said Fermi. So. My instinct's mm-hmm. Fermi. Yeah. That's Texas though. Exactly. The Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox. What is it? <laughs> so um, basically like we've got um, our sciencey explanations of mm-hmm. aliens um, mm-hmm. and like the idea behind like how many aliens there could be and things like that. Um, so the uh, Fermi paradox mm-hmm. is uh, basically a conflict between the lack of clear, obvious evidence for extraterrestrial life, aliens, right? Mm-hmm. And various high estimates of their existence. Um, so basically, uh, if life is so easy, someone from somewhere must have come calling by now. So I see. um, Basically, this paradox, um, it actually came from a casual conversation that he was having with fellow physicists Edward Teller and Herbert York, um, as well as Emil Konopinski, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Mm -hmm. Um, Basically, they were discussing recent UFO reports and the possibility of faster than light travel. And that was a while ago. This was a while ago. This was in the uh, 1950s. I think it was 1950 exactly, actually. Okay, gotcha. Um, They're just arguing. Yeah. Well, not even necessarily arguing, but just having like a casual conversation about like, oh, this is what's going on and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then Fermi blurted out just like, well, where is everybody? Right. And um, like they're, they they're aren't there or they would have reached us, reached out to us already because they wouldn't leave us on red if so they saw. Basically, okay. it's like his his question is like, well, why haven't we like seen anyone yet if there are people out there? Mm. Um, Did and you see the TikTok during COVID? Um, when it was like making fun of like aliens, like basically going by Earth and being like, "Hey, we found it." Oh, <laughs> oh, never oh, mind. We're actually, just gonna keep I going. Don't wanna. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have not seen it. No, nah. <laughs> they're so funny. Um, Which is possible that they came by possible. and they're like, "Nah, they're too dumb. They don't have." Yeah, there's cool technology yet. There's a lot of possibilities. Right. And um, some of the like attempts to explain the Fermi paradox that I found are things like um, intelligent extraterrestrial beings are extremely rare. Um, the <laughs> lifetime. Say that again. <laughs> I know, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, and then it's like the lifetime of such civilizations is really short. So maybe they don't last very long um, or that they exist. But for various reasons, we see no evidence. Um, okay. So it suggests that at like universe time and space scales, two intelligent civilizations would be unlikely to ever meet, even if many developed during the life of the universe. Because it's so big. It's so big. Yeah. And so those are a couple of the explanations to the Fermi paradox that have been proposed. Obviously, we haven't been able to prove anything because, Mm -hmm. like, we haven't found aliens. So, like, we don't know. Right. You know? Um, But a... um, That's interesting. Yeah. So basically, the paradox is 
Um, there could be, but we don't know because they haven't talked to us. Yeah, it's pretty much like it's if they're out there, basic. then why haven't we seen them? Okay. Um, is basically what this paradox is proposing, right? Okay. Um, which like – I mean, but scientists research stuff that you can't see or prove all the time. True. Well, and like that that paradox came up in like 1950. Mm-hmm. We didn't really know how big the universe was. Like we didn't know right. that there were trillions of galaxies out there until I think it was like 2015. Mm-hmm. We thought that there were billions of galaxies out there, which is significantly less. Um, right. Yeah. Um, one way that I like to explain the like number difference is if you were to count one number per second with no breaks, no breaths, nothing like that, and you wanted to count to a million, it would take you about 11 days, which, you know, chug a bunch of Red Bulls, count your face off. You could do yeah. that, you know? Yeah. Um, if you wanted to count to a billion, it would take you about 37 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, no that's one, one billion. That. Okay. If you wanted to count to one trillion, it would take you 37 and a half thousand years oh to count God. to. That is how big one trillion is. Okay. Like a lot of people don't realize how ridiculously large the difference between a billion and a trillion is, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's significant. Yeah. <laughs> it's like – it's insane, mm-hmm. right? And so um, – so we just didn't even have a concept for we didn't even have a concept much. for how much was out there. Right. And the fact that there was like the Martian craze of the twenties and all of that, I feel like we're somewhat connected to that. Oh yeah, totally. A little bit. Lowell Maybe. Observatory has always been involved in the conversation surrounding if aliens. Not stirring the pot, actively yes. stirring the pot. <laughs> yeah. For those of you guys who don't know, um, our founder, first director, Percival Lowell, he uh, believed that there were aliens on Mars, right? Yes, and he, did. he believed that there were these canals between like civilized Martian, you know, towns mm-hmm. and civilizations, things like that. Um, and that all happened kind of in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. He very loudly believed it. Very loudly. I mean, he wrote books. He yep. spoke at conferences, all kinds of stuff. He mapped Mars with the Clark mm-hmm. Telescope, which you can still come look through, which is yeah, really neat. Exactly. And so, like, this idea that aliens are out there, it's not a new concept. And it is also one of the central points of how Lowell was founded. Mm -hmm. I mean, he founded the observatory because he wanted to study Mars, because he believed that there were these aliens on Mars. And so... And good for him. Yeah. (laughs) Honestly. And so it's like, uh, it's this constant topic of conversation. I mean, like, I get asked at least once a night when I'm working Mm -hmm. if I believe in aliens. And the answer is always, yes, I do. Do I believe that aliens have been to Earth? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Not as much. You yeah, know? I um, – so we get to go to, like, these cool, like, symposiums mm-hmm. and uh, we get to talk to, like, the USGS and that yeah. kind of thing. And it was just, like, two months ago. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I always thought was decently, like, taboo in the industry was talking about, like, life on other planets. Oh, yeah. It is. No. It is not. This yeah. guy's up here from the USGS talking about the Mars rover. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, you know, the whole purpose. He's, like, yeah, we're just looking for organisms and, mm-hmm. and, and fossils of – alien life forms on Mars. And I was like, here we've come full circle. Like this guy's up here in his like, you know, suit and everything representing Mm -hmm. the government talking about like, yeah, we're really excited. Hopefully Mm -hmm. we'll we'll find something. Yeah. But uh, it is important to remember that when we're talking about trying to find life on Mars or Europa or Enceladus, we're talking like microbial life, right? We're not talking intelligent civilizations. We're talking about like single-celled organisms, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, things that are alive, but not necessarily like you can communicate with them. Right. That's kind of the general idea of mm-hmm. at least not with, with that our attitude. solar system. <laughs> <laughs> you could talk to them a lot, yeah, I'm sure. True. You could talk to them. They're not really going to talk back, <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the idea is like in our solar system, mm-hmm. as of right now, the kind of life that people are looking for is this like microbial life. Um, mm-hmm. But if you talk to a lot of astronomers, pretty much every astronomer I've ever spoken to, and I'm obviously not speaking for all astronomers because I haven't talked to every single astronomer right. out there. Add us in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> um, but pretty much every astronomer or astrobiologist, astrogeologist, whatever, pretty much everyone I've spoken to believes that there are aliens out there because the universe is so big. 
I mean, like like we were explaining the difference between billion and trillion. There are trillions of galaxies. Right. Galaxies with hundreds to trillions of stars. Stars that, statistically speaking, have at least one planet orbiting around them. Mm-hmm. Like the idea that even one in a million planets has life on it, that's a lot of planets with life on them, you that's know? True. What's so. the uh, and this might be what you were going to bring up next with mm-hmm. the Drake equation, but there's there there is some sort of science to figuring this out based on how long it takes to for life to form, mm-hmm. how many um, evolutions a star mm-hmm. must go through. Yeah. So like a second generation star, first generation star, whatever, uh-huh. and uh, how long the universe has been around since the Big Bang yeah. to create enough time for civilized life. Is that the Drake equation? Um, so the Drake Basically. equation, um, I have it in front of me because I don't have it memorized. Um, but the Drake equation, um, it oh, has a lot of it, letters. Yes. Ew. So it takes in. They're Letters all, should not be math. I'm sorry. Fair. <laughs> Pretty much all of them are constants, though. So um, constants are like a set number uh-huh. instead of like an unknown variable. Right, I was asking for the audience. Yes, yeah. uh, obviously. Uh, obviously. Of course. Um, so okay. the Drake equation uh, spits out the number of civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy with which communication might be possible. Shut up. In the Milky Way? I thought in this was Milky everywhere. Way. This is the We're Milky Way. We're talking like Star Trek universe We're talking right the Milky Way only. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So that is the um, like output of this equation. Now It's the just the inputs, Milky Way. Sorry, I'm still Milky buffering way. that. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. So the input is uh, the average rate of star formation in our galaxy, Um, the fraction of those stars that have planets, the average number of planets that can be potential or that can potentially support life per star that has planets. So basically like a star um, or a planet has to be close enough to its home star that it doesn't Mm. freeze, but far enough away to where it doesn't or yeah, far enough away to where it doesn't melt. Um, it's called the Goldilocks zone. So like gotcha. in our solar system, we actually have three planets in the Goldilocks zone. There's Venus, Earth, and Mars. Mm-hmm. But um, Venus has increased volcanic activity, very thick atmosphere, uh, rain sulfuric acid. Lots of acid. Super like dense atmosphere. So very crazy pounds per square inch on your body at all times. Not um, comfy. As well as just like overheated um mars has the opposite problem not enough atmosphere so it's freezing cold on mars it's just funny because it's red um, so you think i know okay. but that's the iron uh oh. mars is basically a rusty planet yeah um so the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets basically is like how many planets are in the goldilocks zone okay um then we have the fraction of planets that could support life that actually develop life at some point. So this is the idea that not all planets that can support life do support life. Mm-hmm. So again, we have three planets that could support life based off of their placement, but for other reasons don't support life. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay. Then we have the fraction of planets with life that actually go on to develop intelligent life. <laughs> so... Planets that form life that make it past that microbial phase, make right. it past Which is the that. majority of the time, right? I, I, I don't know enough about biology to yeah. say the majority of the time. Well, I saw like um, a graph and it was like, this is how long for just like microbes mm-hmm. and then you're like a fish. Yeah. And then it's even like itty bittier and mm-hmm. that's all of humanity in yeah. that little sliver of the timeline. It's mm-hmm. like, whoa. No, totally. So... It's like um, – This doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because, like, I mean, if you think about it, like, we're looking, actively looking for microbial life on Europa, Enceladus, uh, Titan, Mars. Right. And so those planets – or even if we just find, like, a, a fossil or something that shows that those microbial life forms did exist at some point, mm-hmm. they would be involved in this number right here okay. because it didn't make it past that stage. It didn't make it, it too intelligent life. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and that is assuming the um, that life is can happen organically and not through some weird like comet seeding or panspermia type thing. And which that's is a actually, whole other that's actually something that we're gonna talk about in the origins of life episode. Ooh, yeah. stay tuned. Yeah, so I, I already made the outline for it. I'm very excited. So I'm not going to get super into that right now Spoilers. because we are going to have like a full episode on that kind of stuff. Awesome. So Okay. Um, so but this is with the assumption that life can happen organically then, mm-hmm. et cetera. Yeah. Okay. 
And then um, the next number is the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signs of their existence into space. Which is theoretical at this point, right? Because No. So we've done that. We've right. been doing that since we started like the using wheel. radios and TV. Oh, um, okay. Because those actually project – um, signals out into space. So we've been unknowingly oh, projecting we're stuff we're into about space. Signals out, not just technology and exactly okay. signals out, not technology, but signals. Got it. And so, like, don't if look you up think the first it, signal we sent into space. It is not a good look for Earth. Let me tell not. you. But I hope that the Elvis uh, yeah. transmission, the live transmission from mm-hmm. Elvis in Hawaii, made up. For, I really hope bit. so. Yeah. Just don't Google it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> aliens. Gonna... Um, (laughs) but um like if you think about it we just recently in humanity developed that kind of technology it's basically yesterday exactly the timeline exactly and so it's like this number right here the fraction of civilizations that develop that technology i mean who knows maybe their planet gets wiped out by something like the bubonic plague or maybe there's an asteroid that hits their planet and decimates them before they can even develop this kind of technology and so that's what this uh number is kind of factoring in gotcha and then so the dinosaurs could have developed radio technology at some point but they just didn't get the chance that would be hilarious instead they're chickens (laughs) i mean we could have been lizard people at this point so who knows (laughs) um because i mean if you think about it like again i'm not a biologist i'm not i i I don't do anything along that line or along those lines but Mm -hmm. like you think about it i would consider dinosaurs a civilization not in they had not hierarchies. a super intelligent in civilization they were super cute well the ones that go yeah are smart what are true some of them are tell really not a smart. biologist <laughs> yeah <laughs> some of them are pretty smart um they never did develop that technology that uh releases detectable signs that into we know of. Uh, solar system <laughs> or into space um and so like their I would space pass- suits would be so funny, dude. <laughs> Can you imagine like a T Rex no. spacesuit? <laughs> Tiny little arms. <laughs> and then the Bronchiosaurus is always on like oh big things. God, yeah. it could, like wrap He's around got his the neck, shuttle. Like. <laughs> like, glad to throw us off the conversation. <laughs> so anyway, dinos didn't make it. And maybe there was another mm-hmm. civilization on another planet and then they were yeah. also hit by a big old meteor. And then they didn't develop again, you know? Yeah. It could be. Um the final number in the Drake equation is right. the length of time for which civilizations release detectable signals into space. So um, we are really we have been releasing detectable signals into space for quite a bit 40s. of time, like the forties. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're just gonna blow past that. Um, so um, we've been uh, releasing detectable signs for that long, mm-hmm. um, but like. If civilization ended tomorrow, that's a finite amount of time that we've released those detectable signs. Right. Right. Um, And so that's what this number is, is Mm -hmm. that amount of time that these civilizations could uh, send these. And that's theoretical since we're still. All of this is theoretical. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So all of the Drake equation is pretty theoretical. But um, Mm -hmm. basically, uh, what the Drake equation is. Is it's an equation um, based off of probability. Um, so, like I said, these are all kind of guesstimates, uh, mm-hmm. like educated guesses based off of what we know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's a probability equation, basically, mm-hmm. um, estimating the number of active, communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. So, this number that it's spitting out is the number of civilizations in the Milky Way that can communicate in space. How many are there? What's the answer? I'm not entirely sure because I think it it depends on what variables you're using. Mm. Because all of these could be a lot of different numbers, you know? So I don't know what the kind of general consensus right now is, Mm -hmm. but like the Milky Way is giant so the yeah. amount of planets that could potentially have life is pretty high the amount of uh planets that probably have life is a little lower than that uh yeah. the amount of planets that have life that is intelligent is 
even lower than that. Mm -hmm. And then the amount that could communicate with us is even lower than that. So I I know I that know. They, <laughs> they found a certain spot in the 70s that they were like, if there is, mm -hmm. according to the Drake equation, it's probably there. And I don't know a ton about that. And then, I know what you're talking about, though. And then in the 70s, the Arecibo Observatory, mm -hmm. which is such a cool observatory. <laughs> there are such sweethearts out there. They're doing so much mm -hmm. for like education and science. Mm -hmm. uh, look them up. Support them by their merch. Yes. Um, they uh, worked with Carl Sagan to send out the Arecibo message. Mm -hmm. And um, like all of the annoyingly crazy facts in my head that you don't put in there. It's from John Compton was telling me about this. And the Arecibo message included so much information about humans. And it was just like, bloop, here you go. Here's information about us uh, using this huge radio or satellite telescope. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that they sent them, look it up. It is so weird. It's like... Here is our genome. Mm -hmm. Here is exactly how to kill us. <laughs> Here's our, all of our social security numbers and how we eat sandwiches. Some of that I was exaggerating, but they literally had like, here's how we eat. And here's a bite of a sandwich. Here's a picture of, and it's all sent in binary. Mm -hmm. So as, assuming that math is like a universal language that they could use for this. But, uh, and I just saw a horrible movie about it. Uh -huh and getting a message back. So there's a theory that, so I think it's with 40,000 years it was mm -hmm. gonna take to get this message to this star, this this system where they think is most likely to have civilized life that could mm -hmm. understand it using the Drake equation. Uh, so the, the theory is that it was intercepted by a different species and mm. they're like, oh, hey, I'll send you our genome and stuff. It was it was quite friendly. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, it was it was really really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest everybody go look up the Arecibo message and get as freaked out as I am about the information that we shared. Um, which in our podcast interview with the Arecibo Observatory, I did interrogate them. Yes. I'm like, why, sir? Why? <laughs> and he was like, oh no, it sounded fun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Yeah. But um, anyway, that's really interesting. <laughs> But yeah, so that's the Drake equation. Okay. Now, here's where we get into the weird part of aliens. We um, haven't gotten to the weird part no, yet. Oh, no. Lord. So um, before we talk about like our personal things on aliens and things like that, mm -hmm. um, I want to bring up the dark forest theory. And this is something I bring up any The dark forest? Dark forest Oh, theory. man. So this is oh, something I, I bring excited. up okay. every time I talk about aliens. Um, so it's based on a book called The Dark Forest. Um, and the basic principles in the book, uh, there are three of them. Okay. First off, all life desires to stay alive, right? So survival instinct, yeah, survival instinct for the most part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Second, there is no way to know if other life forms can or will destroy you if given a chance, right? Yes. The third one is lacking assurances, the safest option for any species is to annihilate other life forms before they have a chance to do the same. I'm from Texas. Shoot first, ask later. I get it. Okay. And so uh, basically the general idea with this is uh, it is safer to stay hidden from other civilizations Otherwise, you risk the chance that another civilization will be hostile and attempt to wipe out your civilization. If you've watched Star Trek, you know why the Arecibo message was so controversial because of this. Uh huh. Now, if we had some sort of unified organization that you brought know, planets yeah. together, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll think on it. There's an idea there mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, but, uh, the really cool thing about this is even though it is based on a book, mm -hmm. it's actually rooted in applied game theory. So this is actually like a mathematical thing of game like theory? game theory. Yeah. So game theory is a subsection of mathematics. And it's nothing to do with wild uh, ducks or it actually does game. have to do with like games, uh, the mathematical probabilities of different games and things like that. So it's like the math behind seemingly random games um, as well as other things. 
Oh, man. It's weird. We should get John Compton to do a podcast episode Dude, about game yeah. theory. Game theory is cool. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, so basically this whole thing, uh, the whole dark force thing, um, the the Fermi fair paradox asks us where all the aliens are, if the cosmos should be filled with them based mm-hmm. off of the Drake equation. Right. The dark forest theory says we should pray we never find them. <laughs> Right. So um, the way I usually phrase it. I love how ominous I know. I know. (laughs) Bless. Well, the way I usually phrase it is, okay, imagine you are alone and you are walking through a dark forest. Would you rather not know if something's in there with you or know that something's in there with you and that it has a 50-50 chance of hunting you? That's a hard question. I know. So are you the type of kid that when you were scared in your bedroom at night, did you put the covers over your head? Yes. Or did you just turn a light on and look at everything intently? Exactly. I am the look at everything intently Mm -hmm. because I'd rather go down swinging. Yeah. uh, But this theory is like most people are more likely to not want to know. And that is that is I can vouch for that because every time I mm-hmm. this comes up, I'm like, no, I want to know. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, you're crazy. Just don't mm-hmm. don't tell me. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And so the dark force theory is rooted in this idea that like if we do end up finding some sort of intelligent life, there's no telling what they're going to do to us. <laughs> Yeah. And what so, a way to go out though. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, think about it. I, it's it, like that it or zombies, so cool. I'll take aliens. I <sighs> zombies are dumb. <laughs> zombies are my number one irrational fear. Are you serious? I'm terrified of zombies. Really? That is literally the only thing. I don't know why. I don't know why. I have I have no reason zombies to be. Zombies and of clowns. That. They're not allowed at Lowell. I <sighs> no. Nope. I if a zombie apocalypse happened, I would just <laughs> I, I could not. I could not. I <laughs> could not. I couldn't do it. Oh, man. I, Either that or I would go into like over survival mode, you know, like oh, I, it's one or the other. And I, I hope don't if it happens, we're together because I just want to witness it. <laughs> I'm just here for the chaos. I would in just general. have a mental breakdown and something would happen. Um, <laughs> You'd be the last survivor. So, just like, just ah! <laughs> I would have no remorse. Like somebody gets bit, they're gone. They're gone. I don't I don't care who it you're is. You're that one in the I'm movie. I'm that one in the movie. I'm the one who you're like, I can't do it. I'm like, I can. Haley, do Haley moves the plat forward, just, y'all. Uh, I ca- uh, okay. <laughs> we need to change the uh, Okay, subject. aliens. <laughs> aliens, though, what a way to go out. Dude, yeah, that would be crazy. But that would um, be super cool. Yeah, so that's um, the idea behind the dark forest theory, right? Okay, um, we don't want to know. We don't want to know. We don't and know. But they never if met we a do scientist. Find them, who knows? You know, scientists I know. always want to know. Honestly, the things that but, scientists um, find out, you'll need to touch some grass yeah. <laughs> and calm down <laughs> some of the science going on out there. Um, okay, but it's cool uh, that it brings up this idea of like. Um, there's no way to know if other life forms can or will destroy you, right? Uh, so this isn't like a theory. This is actually just like what I like to talk about when it comes to aliens, like my personal opinions and things mm-hmm. is, okay, let's say it's best case scenario, right? We find an alien race and they're not here to destroy us, right? They, they come they're here friends. in peace, right? Yeah. Uh, first issue is language barriers, how are we supposed to talk to them, mm-hmm. right? Uh, there is a very, 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 almost impossibly tiny, slim chance that we speak the same language yep. or can figure out a way to communicate in some meaningful way. So I know right? um, astronomers don't – he who must not be named. But Neil deGrasse Tyson had a really interesting video about this mm-hmm. where he was talking about like – you know, uh, us and chimpanzees, it's like mm-hmm. a little bit of a difference in our DNA yeah. and it's like talking to a toddler. Exactly. So imagine something with a completely different, maybe not mm-hmm. even carbon yeah. structure exactly. trying to communicate. Like there's there's no way of knowing how we could even possibly try to communicate with them. I have an answer for this. Mm-hmm. Pi. Pi? Not the math thing. Like actual pi. Actual pi. Like it doesn't matter who you are or what kind of animal you are or if you speak any sort of language, if someone's made me a pie and is offering me, I'm like, they're cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll make this work. But what if they're 
allergic to what's in the pie. Well, what if it's you know, toxic it's the to them? Thought that counts. You know, yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> they might true. think that you're trying to poison them like because there's no goods. way to explain. You that's know? fair. That's fair. And so um, that's the first issue you run into. Yeah. The second issue poison is pie. something. <laughs> <laughs> the second issue is something that I feel like does not get talked about enough mm-hmm. when it comes to aliens because a lot of people bring up the language barrier yeah. thing. The second thing is the fact that we are biologically different could lead to devastating results. Think about when people came over the sea and brought smallpox blankets, wiped out civilizations. Imagine that on a global scale, right? Mm. Aliens come, they Too have soon. some sort of like viral. viral issue that they don't know can be transmitted to us. We don't know that they have it and then it wipes out our population, you know? Mm. So that's the thing I usually like bring up is the fact that mm. like even if – you know, let's say best case scenario, they come here, they're, they they do not want to fight us. They're peaceful. We can speak with them somehow. And then they sneeze on us. And then they sneeze on us and we all die. What a way to go out yeah. though. Think about it. An exactly. alien sneeze. It'd be crazy. Right. Oh, no. And so that's another thing that I usually talk about when it comes to aliens is like, yeah. even if we do find a way to communicate or it is that like infinitesimally small possibility that they speak the same language as us somehow, then... What they have cooties. They bring cooties and kill us all. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That's fair. And so it's uh, the idea of like if there is a civilization out there who has figured out faster than light travel can get to us in the first place, right. it would be smarter for them not to come here because we could also transmit diseases to them. And if they are intelligent enough to figure out faster than light travel, mm. they've probably figured that out by now. Right. So that's kind of an answer to the paradox. Was it the, f- the I Fermi keep wanting paradox. to say Ferengi and that's a Star <laughs> Trek species. Um, the the what, Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox. Mm-hmm. That's kind of an answer to why haven't they contacted us and it's because we're gross and we have cooties mm-hmm. and they don't want our, our germs. Yeah. And probably. another idea is like um, if they somehow can see us, uh, the farther away you look, the farther back in time you're looking. So maybe oh, they're seeing right. dinosaurs. They're seeing our dino buddies maybe trying to figure out radios. Nothing, <laughs> you know. Maybe they're they're seeing Earth before there was anything on it, and they don't think that there's anything here. Which is a whole you trip. Know? That's a whole other. That's scenario, just mind bending you know? in a different way. Yeah. But more than likely, if they are capable of some sort of faster than light travel, they can tell that it's us here and not anything that came before us. But like they might not want to come here because they know that there are issues where Mm -hmm. like maybe they get here and we're hostile uh maybe they get here and there's no way for us to speak to them also true Uh, maybe they get here and we have cooties and we end up killing them all or vice versa you know so it's like it's one of those like the little et like an et they wore the little like cdc they could wear like cdc things and everything but maybe those don't work on alien cooties you know what i mean like maybe there is some sort Hmm. of disconnect between the type of cooties we have versus the type of cooties they have maybe Mm -hmm. there's nothing that they could put on that would keep both from going in or out you know romantic tragedy exactly so it's it's like one of those things where if a civilization is intelligent enough to get here in the first place. They are probably intelligent enough to stay away from us. Right. But not us. <laughs> Here's our DNA. Come play with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, we can't go there. Right. You know? So yeah. Who knows? But um, that's that's something I typically like to talk about when I think of aliens is like, do you want them to be do here? Do you want them to be here? <laughs> also, like... <Ew. laughs> Look at how we treat each other now. I know. Imagine. Well, there's like that inspiring <laughs> um, in Independence Day, the inspiring, yeah. like, it's mm-hmm. all of us now mm-hmm. and we're best friends and all of our problems yeah. are solved because it's us against the bad squid alien mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Um, also <laughs> probably wouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's fun to think about. It is. It's cool to think about. So... Um, knowing this and knowing that if they're that smart, then they're smart enough to not want to have anything to do with us, which to be fair. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So why then are we still like as a scientist, not we, the royal we, like why are, why are scientists still trying to, to find this out? Is it more to see like what will happen to us? 
Because we're naturally curious. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, think about we're it. We're not as intelligent as the aliens who are like, I'm not looking for it. We're Fair. not there yet. <laughs> Fair. That. And also, like, we are a naturally curious species in general. Yeah. I mean, like, if you look at toddlers, they're constantly asking you questions. They're trying to figure out what things yeah. feel like, what they smell like, what they touch, uh, or what they f- mm-hmm. <laughs> touch like, what, <laughs> um, what they taste like, you know, right. things like that. And then um, if you look at scientists, we're constantly trying to figure out, um, you know, again, what things' properties are, what why things are the, the way they are. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like – we sent robots to Mars called curiosity and spirit and opportunity, perseverance. These are very like humanistic traits. And so the reason that we are still looking for everything is because of all of those humanistic traits, all those things that make us human. Kind of adorable. It is really cute. Like a really wholesome kind of way. (laughs) It is really wholesome. And like, I think, um, a lot of scientists who are actively searching for things like this, um, probably one of the things, uh, that, they have in mind or we have in mind is like maybe by the time we do find something out there we will have the technology to be able to communicate with these beings to keep us from catching these diseases or transmitting diseases like maybe by then we will have evolved so much as a species that we will have answers to these issues yeah so like carl sagan when he sent that message he was just like (laughs) It's oh. like, oh, not my problem now. Yeah, <laughs> Let's basically, for a future generation. Yeah, and so it's like one of those things where I think scientists just have faith that by the time we get to that point of finding things out there, of being able to even get there, mm-hmm. or send a message, an invite for them to come here, by the time we do that. I think a lot of scientists are hoping that we will have answers to these problems. But as of right now, we don't. We don't have any idea of what we can do. Well, here's to the next generation for figuring (laughs) that out for us, I guess, Mm -hmm. (laughs) since we've already put it out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, and that's our time. Oh, my gosh. Which is crazy crazy how quickly that went. I just... I could Mind talk about aliens bending. for hours. Well, maybe we need to do a, a part two. If you want yeah. a part two for aliens or a podcast about game theory, let us know in the comments. Yeah, totally. Or, I would be down to do either one. Um, or they can reach out to us. Yeah. We have our spiel. Absolutely. Give us our contact spiel. Yes. Hey. So if you guys want to reach out to us, uh, offering us any suggestions or feedback on anything you heard in this episode or any of our episodes, uh, we do have a Discord channel mm-hmm. and a uh, Twitter page where you mm-hmm. can ask us these questions, where you can and um, that might date us a little bit. Yeah, if Twitter might <laughs> date us a little bit. Uh, we possibly have a Twitter page. We possibly page. have a Twitter page. This was recorded um, a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so There's probably um, a Twitter something. or like Hive. You know what? Find us. There's got to be something. Star stuff. Google Star stuff. it. We'll be somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or suggestions or anything you want to correct us on, go for it. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, Discord's not going anywhere. Discord's not going anywhere. Our Discord's and hopping. <laughs> we got lots of stuff in there. So highly recommend checking that out. But um, yeah. yeah, that's all we have time for. Thank you Yay. for listening to me rant about the scientific probability of aliens. Um, maybe next time we'll talk about like conspiracy theories about aliens. Ooh. We were going to sprinkle some of that in here, but I just kept just talking. Didn't so. have any time. But yeah, thanks guys. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>